Hi, this is Brian Gracely. In this second video, looking at uh, operations and cloud management and operations for cloud computing, we are going to look at a couple of trends that, that more and more companies, whether they are public clouds or people that are more advanced in building private clouds, are starting to look at and evolve to as they uh, look at how they manage their cloud. So in the first video looking at this, we looked at the different key elements and key points within a typical technology stack where we're seeing evolution in how people manage cloud resources, whether those are infrastructure resources, application resources, or how we get from sort of a fixed environments to more automated, orchestrated environments. And in this uh, video, what we're going to do is we're going to really look at sort of two trends that have been evolving and some technologies that have come with that, um, that people are beginning to look at more and more as they embrace more about cloud uh, computing technologies and they embrace more ways to consume IT services via cloud computing, whether that's internal private clouds or public cloud services. So the first one we're going to look at is this idea that um, as IT organizations, as the CIO begins to say, look, there are many, many choices for delivering IT services, some of which are delivered internally, some of which are delivered externally. They're beginning to say, you know, I'm probably going to need a system that will help me manage more than just my internal resources, right? So let's call that my private cloud. But I'm also going to want to be able to have some visibility, and let's say this is the CIO or the IT organization, I'm going to want the ability to manage resources across multiple clouds. So we'll call this cloud two, cloud three, and so forth, you know, fourth cloud. And these clouds could be various public clouds. They could be uh, interactions with partners. They could be community type of things. So if you're in a specific industry in which you have collaborative relationships for research and development, for cost sharing, for various reasons, really what they're looking for is how do I build a management system that's going to not only allow me to be extremely efficient at resources within a single cloud, but also how do I begin to have visibility across multiple clouds? And this visibility could come in a number of ways. In some cases, we hear people talk about use cases where they would like to uh, be able to have resources that live in a private cloud for sort of steady state uh, applications, steady state, um, you know, consistent demand. So maybe they've got some of those resources. But for some times of their business where they've got spikes, they've got variability in demand, they may want to also leverage resources out of public, resource, uh, public clouds. And sometimes this gets uh, misconstrued as a terminology called like cloud bursting, where uh, uh, you know, demand will come in for a while and then magically these applications will just all move around. It's a little more complicated than that. But we do see companies that are saying, I'd like to sort of manage steady state within one cloud and you know, deal with spikes within another cloud uh, to, to deal with multiple types of resources. How you want to do that, whether your applications are capable of that, is uh, sort of a different discussion, but I do need to have a management system that gives me visibility into are there resources available out of other clouds? When do I need to begin to look at trending and uh, analysis of when I may want to look at leveraging other clouds? So that's one use case that we see. Another use case is we may find that uh, we want to start out using public cloud resources for some applications. Uh, in the past, I've talked about like marketing projects where it may only be for a couple of months that you need the resources. You don't really know what the capacity is going to look like. You don't really know what the scale needs are. And you may want to start out with those applications or those resources out here in some public cloud, right, for a marketing launch, for a trade show, for a new partnership. But over time, you may find that those dwindle um, to the point where you don't need all that flexibility, you don't need all that scalability, and you may want to bring those back in-house because the type of data that it's collecting ongoing may be something that you need to audit, that you need to keep secure, whatever reason, or you may want to move it. Uh, maybe this is going to start off as a North American launch, it's going to move to Europe, and over time maybe it moves to Asia. And so you may want to have the capability of moving those resources from one cloud to another cloud, from one region of a cloud to another cloud. So again, another use case we're having that sort of centralized manageability, centralized visibility, and the ability to realize 
How can I move cloud? How can I move resources around? Applications around? What are the tweaks and nuances of each different cloud that I have to be aware of? How do I get centralized feedback uh, into how those applications are running? More and more reasons that we're starting to see more people look at sort of centralized management across multiple clouds. And there's a lot of different vendors that are doing this. Um, but we see you know, more and more people looking at this as something they want to have visibility to because ultimately, as a CIO or an IT organization, you want to be able to look at IT resources, the ability to deliver IT services, as uh, a set of global resources, a set of, in some cases you need best effort, in some cases you need lowest cost, in some cases you need very, very precise SLAs, and not being able to look at all the global resources that may be able to help your business or be able to help you serve your customers is, uh, is, is becoming more and more short-sighted. We're seeing more CIOs that are looking for this type of capability. <clears throat> so that becomes one uh, sort of new trend that's happening in cloud management and cloud operations and orchestration. The other thing that we're seeing is, and this is a maybe a little more of a, of a unique case, but it's something that's called DevOps, right? And it sort of derives from what you'd expect two groups, the development groups, groups that are building applications, that are testing applications, that are constantly making changes to applications, and the operations group, the group that's responsible for keeping all this stuff running, for being available, being, being a pager, the, you know, the guys who have to, to keep the lights on in essence. And in the past, these were very diametrically opposed groups. The development people were specifically responsible for getting the application developed, uh, testing it, uh, you know, doing, doing unit testing and scale testing, but they weren't the ones who necessarily were there when it went down. Now, they may have been pulled in, but they weren't monitoring it 24 by 7. And the operations team didn't necessarily know all the fine details of how an application was built. They just knew it was an application. They had to maintain the operating system. They had to maintain the network and storage. And what we're seeing as applications evolve, as more and more web applications get built, mobile applications, applications that... Uh, scale up and down uh, very dramatically over time um, that have to get deployed and reiterated and changed and updated uh, much more frequently than maybe it did in the past. Um, we're starting to see uh, organizations that have those types of needs where uh, the application development cycles are getting compressed, the deployment cycles and, and reiteration cycles for new versions are getting compressed, and more and more they have to tie in across the infrastructure. They have to tie in across where data is stored. They have to maybe tie in multiple clouds to where the line between dev and ops is beginning to blur and we're starting to see this sort of phenomenon that's called dev ops. All, all sort of one word. And again, the idea is that um, the way that we're going to build applications and infrastructure is gonna be more, much more tightly aligned. So instead of having these very distinct lines between infrastructure, and applications, just like we've seen in other parts of cloud computing, this is starting to change, right? Now, in many cases, this is for very, very large web scale environments, uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Google, and sometimes people will dismiss that if you're an enterprise or a government and say, well, that's it's not exactly for me. But it's worth keeping up with these trends. It's worth understanding what sort of tools are these DevOps organizations beginning to use? Um, are these tools, things like Chef and Puppet and other, um, uh, application development environments and, and operations environments, are those tools potentially useful in your environment? Because uh, they may scale down, they may be useful in certain parts of what you're trying to do with cloud computing. So uh, we're not going to dive into this into a lot of depth, there's plenty of stuff on the web to read about it, um, but wanted to highlight that as another trend that we're beginning to see. Just like we've seen the blurring of lines between silos and the infrastructure because of things like virtualization, as new applications get built, and we learn about these new properties of how to scale these applications for cloud computing, for mobile applications, for social media, for all types of application integration, we're also seeing the blurring of lines between infrastructure and applications and between the applications teams and the operations teams. So something to keep your eye on, uh, some terminology to sort of become aware of, um, and over time this may uh, become more and more of a mainstream trend across all sorts of industries and across all sorts of verticals. So uh, hopefully, um, looking at more centralized cloud management across multiple clouds and beginning to get a peek into DevOps is going to give you sort of a, another layer to look at how do we how are the trends in cloud management evolving where are the key points to begin doing research and, and educating yourself on those things and hopefully these two videos on 
cloud management and cloud operations will help you uh, to start to understand the bigger picture and start to look at specific areas as to where to dig in as you're looking at your cloud computing environment or how you're going to interact with multiple types of cloud computing environment. So thanks again for watching and thank you very much.